Okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, so I think we will for the ado. So let's continue on the explanation of how can we use uh, this DC DC converters to drive a DC motor. Okay, so previously uh, we have explained. I have explained that the motor is can be operated in all quadrants. Okay, but um, the limitation is actually on the circuit here. Okay, the circuit. It depends on the circuit. So due to this circuit, so some of the application, some of the motor cannot be operated in all quadrants. Okay, so this is the DC motor and it is connected to a DC DC converter that can only operate it in first quadrant only, which is the voltage is positive and the current is positive. So how it is operated? So let's look at how uh, this circuit uh, function. So when um, T1 is on, okay, T1 is turned on, so automatically D1 will be in reverse bias. So the voltage supply is connected to the load, to the motor. So as you can see, this is the voltage across the armature. So this one is, uh, as you can see, we have a voltage across the armature terminal. And the current is actually charging. Okay, the current inside this inductor is uh, the inductor is actually charging, so that's why uh, the current is actually uh, increasing from its minimum value to its maximum uh, value. Okay, and the concept of the inductor, uh, once it is charged, it need to be discharged in, uh, it need to be discharged to its initial values in one cycle. So uh, for that, so um, T one must be turned off. Okay, when T one is off. Here, D1 is off. Okay, D1 will be in a forward bias. Okay, so the inductor right now uh, will make sure that the current still continue flowing. Okay, so that's why we have a current flow through a back EMF voltage source here and D1. And this current is actually free wheeling inside the circuit. So the inductor is actually discharging. So as you can see, the current is reducing to its initial values. And as you can see, the voltage across the armature terminal is zero. Why this is zero? Because as you can see, when T1 is off, the voltage source is disconnected from the motor. So this is actually the equations on how a uh, calculation on how to determine uh, the average voltage uh, across the armature and also the current armature. So as you can see, the voltage across the armature is actually by integrating this waveform from zero to T. Okay, you integrate, you will obtain the equation is similar to the bar converter, which is the duty cycle multiplied with the VDC input. Okay, and for the average current, so we assume that uh, the current is almost DC. We assume the car. Uh, sorry, the, we assume that the inductor is uh, very very large. So compared to the resistor. So we assume that the current is in DC uh, current. So uh, DC current, so which is a VA minus back EMF over RA. Okay. <clears throat> so this is actually the circuits that um, actually uh, that uh, it, that can allow the motor to be operated in two quadrants. Okay which is this one, quadrant number one, which is a forward motoring. So uh, the voltage must be positive. The current armature must be in positive direction. And the second quadrant is we call forward braking, meaning that the speed is positive, Okay, meaning that your VA is positive, your IA is negative, right? Negative, because the torque is negative. OK, so on how to... Um, uh, so how this can be happen in this circuit? Okay. So for quadrant number one, so what happened or for the quad, for quadrant number one is, so we assume that T1 is turned on right now. So when T1 is turned on, so uh, the current will flow from the voltage source and then charging the inductor okay 
So, and then as you can see also, the voltage armature here is connected to the voltage source. So that's why we have VDC here across the armature voltage. And the current is in charging mode. Yeah, okay, because of the induct this inductor. So as you can see, it starts from zero to its increasing to its maximum uh, value. Okay, and as previous concept where the inductor must be when it is charged, so it might be discharged in one cycle. Okay, so when T1 is off, so D1 will automatically forward bias. And the current here will make sure that the, uh, the inductor here will make sure that the current will continue flowing. Okay, so the current will actually free wheeling inside the circuit. Okay, and the inductor right now is in discharging mode. So as you can see, the current is reducing from its maximum values into its uh, minimum values. Okay. Okay, but if T2 is turned on okay, at this interval, okay, where the energy right now inside the inductor is already uh, almost finished, okay, because the current is right now is it's actually in zero value, T2 and suddenly T2 is turned on. So what happened? Okay. So actually what happened here, so right now, since this energy is almost depleted, the back EMF, okay, the voltage, the end, the vo this back EMF will actually supply the current. So the current will actually flowing out from the positive terminal. So it will flow through this one. Okay. Okay, so the current actually we actually three wheeling here. Okay, when T2 is on, D2 is off right now. Okay, but when T2 is off, okay, this energy will actually supply back to the source. This is when T2 is off. When T2 is off, D2 will turn on and it will automatically uh, connect the BDC here and the current still flowing uh, from the motor to the source. Okay, So right now, as you can see, when T2 is on here, the current, this is a blue arrow. So the voltage source here, we supply the energy to the inductor, okay, but in the reverse direction. So you can see um the current is increasing but in reverse direction so that's why we have a negative current here okay and then when t2 is off okay d2 is forward bias okay then right now the uh, the motor is connected to the source so um the energy will be actually reducing uh, sorry will actually go back to zero Okay, towards uh, positive values. So right now, um, the explanation be uh, between these two graph, two sorry, two diagram here, even though uh, the, you have instead some of the part where the, the current is actually negative here, for example here, from T2 and D2, uh, but the average current is actually still positive because as you can see the area for the positive current is bigger than the negative uh, portion here so meaning that even though it has negative current so the determination of whether it is in quadrant number one or quadrant number two is depends on the average value of the voltage and also the current okay not on the instantaneous uh, values so this is actually when the motor is operated on the second quadrant okay so for the second quadrant meaning that the voltage is still positive 
but the current is negative. Okay, the current negative meaning that the average current is uh, negative. So we look at when D2 is on. So when D2 is on, okay, this one T what T2 is off, right? So T2 is actually off right now. So uh, the motor is supplying back the current back to the source. Okay. So we have here the current is actually from its negative value towards uh, towards its positive values here. Okay. Until all the energy uh, until T2, sorry, until T2 is turned on. Okay, when T2 is turned on, when T2 is turned on, D2 will off. Okay, so the current will be sub, will be supplied by still by the this motor, and then free wheeling inside the circuit, but still in a reverse direction. Okay, so the current will be in this region. So the total, sorry, the average current is still negative. Okay, it's still negative. So, and the voltage across the armature is still positive. So that is uh, how we operate our, how we control okay, the motor to be in second quadrant. So for the Two quadrant choppers, so the average output will be never negative. So both must be positive. Okay, and uh, only the current can be positive and negative depending on the average amateur current calculation. Okay, so this is the equation set related on the two quadrant operation. Still same, uh, the measurement or the calculation for the V armature is using bar converted equation and for the armature current is also the same. Okay, so this one is a four quadrant operation. I think uh, it is the same. Okay, so you can um, look at it. Okay, so for forward motoring here, so T1 and T2 will turn on. Okay, so on. So this is for the regenerative braking, for the number two. And this is for the reverse motoring, which is uh, quarter number three and quarter number four. So the explanation is there. I think actually um, the explanation is actually is similar to the first quadrant and uh, first quadrant chopper and also the two quadrant choppers uh, converters operation. And so this is actually how we um, if you have an AC source here, so this is how we control the speed of the and also the current, uh, the speed at the top for the DC motor. So instead of using a thyristor, so we use an uncontrolled rectifier, which is a diode here only. Okay. So and then the output is actually a, it's actually a DC light voltage, but to make sure that the input of the DC DC converters are clean DC, so we put a, what we call DC link capacitor here. So the, uh, the input here for the DC-DC converter is uh, a pure DC voltage. Okay, so this is the diagram of the circuit. And this is actually the waveform across the V armature. It is in pulse, okay? And this is example, which is I have already explained in the class. Okay, all the solution is there. The second examples and so on. Okay. Okay, so I want to um, explain this uh, third example. So I will continue it in our next videos. Thank you very much.